Hello and welcome to another video. In this one, I'll be doing an analysis of the Bakhmut front and what I expect for this coming week. The Russian forces have recently been reported to have advanced in the direction of Selis Nyanske. And that is very interesting as I do believe that the current Russian forces advances are in the direction of these two roads, which is the E40 highway and the one to the west of Veshukivka. If we look closely, we can see that the Russian forces are dancing in this direction, as well as to Fedorivka and Rostolivka, as well as Vesela itself. With this, we can see that there are these high grounds here to the north, and there's the, this valley here in the center, and then there's high ground here as well. With this, we can see that the Russian forces are looking to have some sort of defensive line here to the north, where they'll have the Bakhmutskovka river here by Fedorivka, and they will have Rosalivka and Vesele if they capture these three villages. So they'll be aiming to do that. After which they'll focus on the western side, which is against Vesyukivka, Bondane, Nikoforivka, and Fedorivka Truha. With this, they'll have this whole line here by this valley here to the north as well, and a large open field to the north. And they will hold this road, which is the only road in this area. With this, they'll be able to have a flanking maneuver against the Selyshnanske, as well as advancing towards Privila, Holubivka, and Minkivka. With this, they'll hold all of this northern area, and they'll have a large bulge, of which they can advance southwards by the canal, having the canal as the flanking, as a defensive flank, and advance southwards towards Jesevyar from the north. And at the same time, they'll advance towards Ivanivske, Kromove, as well as Bohdenivka and Kalinina, as well as Chesavyar itself, to the, from the south towards the north. With this, they'll be aiming to encircle the whole Bakhmut area and the Bakhmut grouping of Ukrainian forces by attacking from the two roads to the north of Bakhmut towards the canal and having the canal as a defensive flank. And they'll advance upwards from... Uh, by the canal, as we have seen from the west of Klishchivka all the way down to Kordyumivka, they've always been advancing by the canal northwards. So they'll continue doing that and connect to the canal from the northern side and advance southwards. They are holding this hill to the west of the canal, as well as this hilly area here, which is next to a lot of open area, which is also to the west of the canal. So they are already holding positions across the canal which allows them to just advance further as they don't need more areas across the canal as they can advance from this southern area. So they will hold this canal as the western flank of the Russian grouping in the Bakhmut direction. And they will try to encircle the whole Bakhmut area th through this way. I believe that this is what they will be doing as an advance towards Siversk would be lengthy and costly. And as we can see, there's a lot of villages in this area, but if they advance in the northwestern direction, then they have to go through as few villages as possible. And at the same time, they'll be able to encircle the whole Sievers grouping as well by advancing by the highway, reaching the canal, and then moving northwards from the canal. Moving in this direction, they'll be able to advance towards Rai Oleksandrivka, and then two directions, northwestwards towards Mikulaivka, and northeastwards towards Kaliniki. With this, you'll be able to reach the Severodonetsk River from the western and the eastern side, and you'll be able to completely encircle the Siversk area. And if they couple this with an offensive to the north of Siversk towards Liman, attacking and controlling Liman will allow them to completely cut off any, any significant escape routes from Siversk and encircle the whole Siversk grouping of Ukrainian forces. This could be one of the goals for the Russian a winter offensive to capture the Siversk and Bakhmut areas with one large push through these areas. And at the same time, according to the former US Colonel Douglas McGregor, the Russian forces have a large grouping of forces to the east and western flank of the Oskar River. If they combine this offensive in the Bakhmut direction with an offensive in the Kharkiv direction towards the Liman area, they will be able to push the Ukrainian forces in this area and pushing them in three different directions towards Liman from two different directions. Looking at the military deployment map, we can see that the Russian forces have four divisions on this front line. The Russian forces have the 4th Tank Division, the 144th Motorized Division, 
the the seventy six sixth air assault division, and finally the one hundred forty fourth militarized division. So the Russian forces have four divisions on this front line, as well as a bunch of brigades and regiments, as well as battalions. With this, we can estimate they have around sixty to eighty thousand troops on this front line. While the Ukrainian forces have a number of brigades and not much more. With that in mind, the Russian forces have a significant number and numerical advantage on this front line. And at the same time, there are reports that Rubishne has a factory maintaining and repairing T-90M tanks within the war zone. And we've also seen a video of Russian BMP Terminator being used in the Kremenda forest line. So the Russian forces don't only have a numerical superiority on this front line, but they also have a significant amount of their best equipment used on this front. With that in mind, the Ukrainians are both at a numerical and qualitative disadvantage on this front line. So the Russian forces are definitely planning something much bigger than defending Kremlin, and they're planning for some sort of offensive. Combining that with the um, with the information of the former U.S. Colonel Douglas McGregor that about two hundred thousand Russian troops are being situated to the north of the Oskar River, we can see that the Russian forces are planning a huge offensive in the Liman and Izium directions, similar to what they did at the start of the war, attacking directly towards Izium and Liman may be their plan of action. Such an assault would look something like this, where they will be trying to gain control over the river line here to the east of this river on the whole front line, after which they will be able to concentrate their forces in the areas where the river line either stops or is much more shallow, which will allow them to have few defenses as the natural defenses allows them to focus the forces where the defenses are weak, which is in the south of this river line here which will allow them to concentrate their forces in the direction of Liman and cutting off the Ukrainian forces in the forest line here south of Kremenna. And at the same time, they'll be able to push westwards towards the Oskil River. And combining that with an assault from the north towards the south, they'll be able to capture all the Ukrainian units by the east of the Oskil River line. And at the same time, if they combine that with an assault to the east of Kharkiv, where they reach the river line here to the east of Kharkiv, they'll be able to hold a strong flanking position here as well. And pushing further south towards Vulgarivyar, Belaklia, and Isium, they'll be able to capture this whole area with their purely with their numerical superiority. So the Ukrainian forces are in a situation where they need to concentrate much more forces here to the north in the Kharkiv direction, which would weaken the Donbas region. So the Ukrainians are in a situation here where they have to choose between the north or the center, as they do not have enough forces to protect both of them if the Russians decides to launch a winter offensive here in the north. At the same time, even if it is just a limited offensive and the information about the Russian groupings here in the north is false, then the Russian forces still have enough troops to concentrate and attack in the direction of Liman and take control over the east of the Oskil River purely by their concentration of forces here to the east of the Oskil River. And that again would force the Ukrainians to choose between the north or the center to defend and towards Bakhmut from two different directions. And at the same time, they're advancing in the direction of Vodadar as well as the west of Donetsk, with a lot of reports of the Russian forces building up forces in the Mariupol area as well, through the Rostov River towards Mariupol, and building up forces here. They may either be delivering a new offensive, if we look at the supply lines, they may be delivering a new sub offensive in the direction of Donetsk, grouping up forces in the Mariupol region, and then moving them to Donetsk or Volodar, or moving all the way to Melitopol or this western area and attack in the direction of Soporizhia. The Russian forces have a lot of different options, but the main one is that the Bakhmut area itself has been com the Bakhmut area itself has been mostly cut off from all directions and are now in a position where their only supply line is from Jesiv Yard, and there's no northern supply line, and there's no southern supply line. With this, the Russian forces have the supply advantage in the Bakhmut area, as well as numerical superiority, as they continue increasing their efforts by increasing their number of soldiers in the area, as well as their, their participation in the battles. 
according to some sources, the Ukrainian forces are facing more and more regular Russian soldiers rather than only Wagner PMC in the Bakhmut area. With that, we can see that the general number of soldiers in this area is increasing and the Russian forces are now not scared to fight face to face instead of just launching artillery all the time. And at the same time, with the weather currently being in double digit negatives by nighttime, we have negative 4 to negative 10 today and negative 4 to negative 12 tomorrow. And all the way to Saturday, it's completely in the negatives, which means that the Russian forces can have an armored push in this direction here to the north of Bakhmut from Blahodatne towards Selishnenske or even further north towards Veshukivka and westwards, which will allow them to cover large, large spans of lands north of Bakhmut and allow them to capture these areas or even advance outside of the roads, which will allow them to attack Veshukivka, Selishnyansky and advance in this southern area towards the north of Bakhmut in the northwestern direction and capture the hills in this area. Looking at the topographic map, we can see that the hills here to the northwest of Bakhmut is the ones that the Russian forces are currently advancing towards. And if they advance in this direction straight by the highway and from the northeast and from the northwestern direction of Solidar, they will be advancing by these from the hills towards the villages or from within the valley to and straight through them. The Ukrainian forces have control of the hills here to the north, which will make it difficult for the Russian forces to advance in these areas, as well as the current fighting happening where the Russians have the low ground, which means that they must use armored columns to advance in these areas, as the Ukrainian forces have the advantage with the high ground. However, here in the southwestern area, we can see that the Russian forces are already controlling the highlands here south of Ivanivske and are now advancing northwards in this direction by the, high, by the hills, trying to get control of them. If they continue their attacks in the direction of Jesavyar and northeastwards, they will be able to capture the hills to the southwest of Bakhmut and the west of Bakhmut, which will allow them to cut off all the roads going to and from Bakhmut, leaving the last road here. If they take the control of the highlands, then the road will be completely cut off. And at the same time, if they advance further northwards, then they'll be able to cut off any Ukrainian forces trying to leave uh, Bakhmut in a retreat. And at the same time, they're advancing northwestwards, trying to get control of the hills here, which will completely cut off any form of escape for the Ukrainian forces. So that is my analysis of the current situation. The Russian forces are trying to completely capture Bakhmut as well as Siversk within the next few weeks as they try to completely encircle the whole area rather than just the city itself by advancing where the Ukrainian forces have uh, isolated villages which are significant like Selishnyansky and trying to advance in the direction of Jesevyar and Ivanivske trying to cover the ground between Bakhmut and Jesevyar itself. And that's all for this analysis. Thank you all for watching and hope you all enjoyed and have a great day.